Hi. Let's play the stranger. Okay. When someone gets home tonight, someone should be wearing a naughty French maid's outfit, a blonde wig, and holding a six pack of Bud Light. Me likey the stranger. Oh, you meant. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Wow. Oh, hello, stranger. Hello, this is Desiree DuVernay talking to you about humor, humoropathy. Yes, I've trademarked that word uh, because it is true that laughter is the best medicine. We can help you. You can help deal with your pain, deal with your disease. As Norman Cousins found out in the anatomy of an illness, as he wrote that laughter is the best medicine, he was able to show that he could cure himself with laughter. It's possible. You can help. And if nothing else, laughter helps to make you feel better. So I want to put together something to help give you an understanding and to help you laugh. And what is laughter? See, basically we have a juxtaposition of things. We take one thing and we juxtaposition it. So if I say I'm going to take my jam and spread it on my socks, that's funny, okay, because it's a little juxtaposition. If somebody says, so help me, I'll rape you, and I say, so rape me, I'll help you, you see, that's juxtaposition, it's a little funny, that type of idea, and we can see it can help you number one. As a man lost in the woods comes upon a monastery, a religious building outside the monastery, the friars in their costumes and the monks are working. And he tells them he's hungry and he's lost, and they invite him in. They say, all we have to eat is fish and chips. And he eats the fish and chips, and he loves the fish. He says, I'd like to meet the man who made the fish. They bring a man out. They say, you the fish fryer? He says, no, I'm the chipmunk. <laughs> I like chips. I want you, big boy. Oh, I want you too. Take off your clothes. I want to see you. I want to see you too. Please, don't see me like this. Oh, yes. Please. I'm coming. Panasonic. Attractive technology. But I cannot feel you. But I'm not in yet. I want to feel you. Okay. I'm coming. Will you miss? Another type of humor comes from the unexpected. I came home one day, went into the bedroom, and there was my best friend, having sex with my wife, my best friend having sex with my wife. And I told my wife, get out of here, get out of here. And I went up to my best friend and I put my finger in, it, in his face and I said, bad dog, bad dog. Unexpected. Hmm, kind of funny, huh? Data, why are you laughing? Thanks. Thanks. When I was out in the middle of the desert, a UFO landed. Three one-inch tall guys got out. They walked over to me. I said, are you really one-inch tall? They said, no, we're really very far away. <laughs> My friend George walked his dog all at once. <laughs> Walking from Boston to Fort Lauderdale and back. And he said, no, you're done. <laughs> and up today, I found a guy's hand in my pocket. I said, what do you want? He said, I want a match. I said, why did you ask for He said, I don't talk to strangers. <laughs> 
have a no pace Luke Skywalker. Condition of pain and suffering. Next, the put down. You see, every bit of humor has some type of a put down. There's a release. We are all one in this world. And when we laugh at somebody else, we're really kind of laughing at ourselves. And the best measure of mental health is being able to laugh at yourself. If you can't laugh at yourself, that's a sign of mental sickness and mental disease. Being able to laugh at oneself and being able to laugh at others, this is a sign of mental growth, mental stability. So we have to learn to grow and recognize that it is a put down, but there for the grace of God go I. That could be me. And that's what makes all of this funny and releases our tension. It makes us all feel a little bit better. Sugar and processed foods can make a bacteria that can take over your child's brain, can take over your brain. And these synthetic sweeteners are even worse. These chemicals, they can help make disease and death. You gotta stop boiling things in oil. And basically they stop making the hormones. So then you're not so happy. You get irritable. When you get irritable, your work suffers. When your work suffers, the wrong man is convicted. When the wrong man is convicted, he has time to think. When he has time to think, he thinks about you a lot. And when he thinks about you a lot, your house explodes. Don't have your house explode. Whole plant foods can increase your wellness, reduce weight, increase sex drive, increase intelligence, restore health, the heart, and all the organs. It's amazing that what whole plant foods can do. You have to stop eating the crap and eat more real food, natural food, nature, not synthetics. I had an uncle up there was a psychic. No, the exact day was going to die. The warden told him. <laughs> Lightweight champion of the world, Ray Boom Boom Mancini. We caught up with him at his training camp preparing for his next fight. Hold it, hold it. I'd rather tell the funniest joke I ever heard. Guy goes to see a doctor. Says, Doc, I'm having problems with my sex life. Doctor said, what kind of problems? Said, I don't know, I can't put my finger on it, but my wife's not too happy. Doctor says, come on, we'll give you a physical examination. After physical, doctor says, problem is you're not in good condition. You're not in good physical shape. What I want you to do is go out and run 10 miles a day for a week. At the end of the week, give me a call. At the end of the week, the guy calls him. Doctor says, how do you feel? He says, I feel great, Doc. He said, has it improved your sex life? He says, I don't know, I'm 70 miles from home. <laughs> releases tension, it reduces expectations. You see, shit happens. You go through life and you plan everything and then shit happens. It's a complicated world. It's very complicated. What we really are is made up of masses of electrons that never touch, held together in electromagnetic ways. And yet we have no ability to understand what we really are. Our brain has convinced us that we're something that we're not. Our brain has convinced us that we're actually a solid thing, but actually we're an energy being. Where things don't touch, this hand can't touch this hand. No matter how hard I clap, they can't touch electromagnetically. These electrons and these electrons can't touch. You can't touch the chair you're sitting in. So what we really are is this vastly complicated, immensely, incredibly complicated form of energy. And then we have another person. And we have the world and the universe, an infinite world, an infinitesimal world. What a crazy, crazy idea. But this is what we really are. And we have this whole perspective of something that isn't true. So we need to be able to recognize this and be able to reduce our expectations. Things happen. You see, it just happens. One time, a very rich elderly man married a very beautiful young chorus girl. And he began to doubt that she might have married him for love alone. So one night when they were having a wonderful dinner in Champagne and she seemed very happy, and he gave her a beautiful gift and he said to her, darling, I want to ask you something and tell me honestly, if I lost all my money, if we lost the yacht, the Rolls Royce, the mansion and all your jewels, would you still love me? And she said to him, well, of course I'd still love you. And I'd miss you, too. <laughs> Just like
like the blonde looking at the orange juice because it says concentrate and then the blonde and then drinks it because she has to shake well before using <laughs> Be sure you get the right attribution there. Я надеюсь, что вы правильно все это поняли. If I should tell my favorite joke uh, for the time being, I would think it would be the one that happened to me in Copenhagen recently when I celebrated my 75th birthday over there. I was invited to play in the city hall. Uh, the uh, city of Copenhagen had invited me to play with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra over there. And as I was walking one day in the street, an old man came over to me. When I say an old man, he was even older than I was. He was in his 90s. And he came over to me and he said, was it you or your brother who died? <laughs> and uh, I told him I really couldn't remember. <laughs> but uh, I told him to call my brother, and if he answered, watch out. <laughs> uh, this happened to be our former barber, the family barber, who lived across the street from us. And I asked him if he could remember an incident that took place one day when I was 16 years old. 16 or 17 years old. I was 16 or 17 years old, more than one day, of course, but it was one of those days. And I came into his shop and I said, Mr. Schwartz, would you be kind enough to cut my hair on this side a little longer and maybe a little shorter on this side? And then would you be kind enough to make maybe three or four holes <laughs> in places here? And little things sticking out, you know, like this, here, there, and there. And in the back, I would like you to do, just do zigzag. <laughs> and you said to me, Victor, you know I cannot do that. But I said, Mr. Schwartz, you did it last time. <laughs> uh, that was Mr. Schwartz. Bud Light presents Real Men of Genius. Today we salute you, Mr. Fantasy Football Manager Guy. Mr. Fantasy Football Manager Guy. Every year you assemble your closest friends to prepare for another season in the knockdown, drag out world of make believe football. Fourth and inches. You were born with the one skill every manager needs to play fantasy football. Absolutely no skill playing real football. Not so good at catching. Imaginary catches. Imaginary touchdowns. Next up, an imaginary score with an imaginary woman. Good imagination. So crack open an ice cold Bud Light, oh Swami of the sidelines. You may come in dead last, but you're always first with us. Mr. Fantasy Football Manager Guy. Bud Light Beer, Anheuser Bush, St. Louis, Missouri. I've made friends with 25 letters of the alphabet. You see, I just. I just don't know why. I've tried. I tried to get to know, but I just don't know why. Well, anatomically speaking, a laugh starts here in the middle of your diagram. It works its way across through your clack and out through your titter valve. 
<laughs> an attack of wind, actually, but it's... I wonder if it's a noise that comes out of a hole in your face. <laughs> Anywhere else, you're in dead trouble. But people... People laugh at all sorts of things. Some ladies laugh at little things. It's a pity, really, but there you are. It's... <laughs> but for thousands of years, philosophers and psychologists, they've all tried to find the secret, the secret spring of laughter. Aristotle said that the nub of laughter was a buckled mill wheel. That is to say, life out of true. All the great, uh, great philosophers, Schopenhauer, Kant, Bergson, Freud said that the essence of the comic was the conservation of psychic energy. But then again, Freud never played second house Friday night at Glasgow Empire. <laughs> yes, I think, I think. I think, ladies and gentlemen, that is a rainbow of laughter. A, real, a rainbow of laughter. At the very, very top, there's the laughter of pure joy. White, if you like, and you can hear that any time you like, for free. Just pass any school playground and you see little children leaping and jumping around for the sheer joy of being alive. And then you go right through the, right through the rainbow, through the different laughs, pink laughter, green laughter, blue laughter, and right at the very bottom there's the dark colours of sarcasm, insult, satire. And that's, I think, laughter, a sense of humour, is the sense of seeing the funny side of life. <laughs> I was five years old watching TV. Only you can prevent forest fires. Oh, no. Every night out the window with a bucket of water. A drunk is into a taxi. He said, take me to the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. He says, you're at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. He says, next time, don't drive so fast. <laughs> We have the idea of small minds, you see, that's what, it's small minds that get caught into a perspective. They don't appreciate the beauty and the grandeur and the complexity, you see, because what we are is a very diverse thing with so many electrons and so many energies, etc. We're all different. And you can never step into the same stream twice and this kind of idea, but there's so many people that get fixated in making things smaller. They have small minds, they have to reduce things. Reduce, reduce, reduce things. You see, so these small minds, they're a little bit different. And they're like the small-minded kidnappers. And they sent the kid back with the ransom note. Of course, the small-minded parents sent the kid back with the money. And that's the face you choose. Something I want to tell you. M minus two. I even I have something to tell you. Huh? Mom, I really like this. Cute. What's it made of? Wool. Like from a cow? Uh huh. Duh, Ashley. All wool comes from a cow. Does cashmere come from a cow, too? Uh-huh. The boy cow or the girl cow? If there's any place that could really use a county fair, it's L.A. The boy cow. Oh, okay. Oh, you mean the one with the... With the tusks? Mm -hmm. The L.A. County Fair. Kinder, simpler, funner. Sugar and processed foods can make a bacteria that can take over your child's brain can take over your brain. And these synthetic sweeteners are even worse. These chemicals 
They can help make disease and death. You've got to stop boiling things in oil. And basically, they stop making the hormones. So then you're not so happy. You get frustrated. When you get frustrated, your daughter imitates. When your daughter imitates, she gets thrown out of school. When she gets thrown out of school, she meets undesirables. When she meets undesirables, she ties the knot with undesirables. And when she ties the knot with undesirables, you get a grandson with a dog collar. Don't have a grandson with a dog collar. Whole plant foods can increase your wellness, reduce weight, increase sex drive, increase intelligence, restore health to the heart and all the organs. It's amazing that what whole plant foods can do. You have to stop eating the crap and eat more real food, natural food, nature, not synthetics. We're going to do some one-liner jokes today, help you to understand and bring a little joy into your life. Take a look at this picture and see 89% of the men just like big tits, 50% of the men like dry eyes, 25% comment on our hair, but most of the men didn't notice it. King Kong is in the back of the picture until after they were told. Well, I'm going to try to bring a little grin into your life with a couple of one-liner comics. And if your dog's barking at the back door and your wife yelling at the front door, who do you let in? We let the dog in because you'll shut up. Efficiency is a highly developed form of laziness. Well, we got a bunch of one-liners here. Let's watch some good people do something. I stayed up one night playing poker with tarot cards. I got a full house and four people died. I want to, um, I want to dedicate my performance tonight to my father, who was a roofer, so, Dad, if you're up there. You know, today I found a guy's hand in my pocket. I said, what do you want? He said, I want a match. I said, why did you ask for it? He said, I don't talk to strangers. <laughs> So, good evening. My name is Chris Turner, although I am changing it to AAA, so I can claim to be the world's best arcade gamer. <laughs> Growing up, I was under the impression my dad didn't like me very much, because he hardly ever did anything with me. He only took me fishing once, and I remember swimming back to shore thinking, my dad doesn't like me very much. A wise man once said, efficiency is just intelligent laziness. But I once said that feet are just shit hands. I only went golfing once, and I remember swimming back to shore thinking... <laughs> Golf's a lot like fishing. An uncle up here was a psychic, knew the exact day he was going to die. The warden told him. So Halloween is soon upon us. I remember the first time my father took me trick-or-treating. I remember swimming back to shore thinking... <laughs> Snoopy costumes are heavy when they're wet. I have a telescope on the peephole on my door so I can see who's at the door for 200 miles. <laughs> Who isn't? Who is it going to be when you get here? Did I already do my deja vu joke? I broke a mirror in my house and I'm supposed to get seven years bad luck, but my lawyer thinks he can get me five. Finally went to the eye doctor, I got contacts, but I only need them when I read, so I got flip-ups. Standing in the park today wondering, why does a frisbee appear larger the closer it gets? And then it hit me. <laughs> went to a karaoke bar last night that didn't play any 70s music. At first I was afraid. <laughs> oh, I was petrified. There's an American saying, possession is nine-tenths of the word. I went to university on a swimming scholarship. 
In university, I was going to join the debating team, but someone talked me out of it. A drunk gets into a taxi. He said, take me to the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. He says, you're at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. He said, next time, don't drive so fast. <laughs> My friend asked me if you could have any superpower in the world, what would it be? I said Cold War Russia. <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is that I'm a romantic. I'm such a romantic. I actually remember my first date. Uh, my father came along and acted as a chaperone, which was awkward because my date couldn't swim, but the point. <laughs> I got an answering machine for my phone. Now when I'm not home and someone calls me up, they hear a recording of a busy signal. <laughs> my grandma, who's addicted to tea, hates the way I say things. She doesn't enjoy my visits. My girlfriend's family are quite religious. I remember the first time I went to stay with her at her parents' house and her dad wouldn't let us sleep together, which was a shame because he's very attractive. I have a map of the United States, it's actual size. It says one mile equals one mile. People ask me where I live, I say E5. My dad has a weird hobby. He collects empty bottles, which sounds so much better than alcoholic, doesn't it? I'm really quite a normal person. I'm very good friends with 25 letters of the alphabet. I don't know why. I bought one of those little glass ball things with the snow in it. You turn it upside down, then you turn it back, and it starts snowing. I bought one. Except the one I have has a little plow in it that comes out and does the roads. My local drama society put on an evening of triple X Roman plays. I thought it sounded really sexy, so I went along. It was just 30 plays. Last night I was in a bar and I walked up to this beautiful woman and I said, do you live around here often? <laughs> she said, you're wearing two different color socks. I said, yes, but to me they're the same because I go by thickness. I have a girlfriend. I've been going out with my girlfriend for... sex. <laughs> oh, yeah. We like the sex. And she said, how do you feel? And I said, well, you know, when you're sitting on a chair and you lean back, so you're just on two legs, and then you lean too far, and you almost fall over, but just at the last second you catch yourself. I feel like that all the time. <laughs> my girlfriend says I'm afraid of commitment. Well, she's not my girlfriend. It's more a wife. <laughs> My wife and I have decided we don't want children. If anybody does, we can drop them off tomorrow. Well, are you having fun getting some, getting some grins? Alcohol's not the answer. It just makes you forget the question. And only dead fish go with the flow. It's something to think about. It's my birthday recently. For my birthday, I got a humidifier and a dehumidifier. <laughs> Put them in the same room, let them fight it out. <laughs> then I filled my humidifier with wax. Now my room's all shiny. Please. Now we have a beautiful little girl who we named after my mom. In fact, passive aggressive psycho turns five tomorrow. <laughs> I went to a museum where they had all the heads and arms from the statues that are in all the other museums. I like 
like what mechanics wear, overall. <laughs> People call me a hypochondriac, which uh, really hurts. <laughs> I quit my job at the helium gas factory. I refuse to be spoken to in that tone. I had trouble going home from there because I had parked my car on a tow-away zone. When I came back, the entire area was gone. <laughs> So I walked home. Everywhere is walking distance if you have the time. In the next scene, I'm sitting on the stool having a drink. Over here's a man on the stool having a drink. He falls down three times. I pick him up each time. Bartender, where does that man live? I'll give him a lift home. Tell me where he lives. Grab the man, pull him down to the car, open the back seat, put him in. He falls down. Did I already do my deja vu joke? I get to the address they gave me, I pull the man out of the car, he falls down three more times, I pick him up each time, I knock on the door. Mrs. Einstein, I brought your husband home. She says, where's his wheelchair? I wish I could sleep, but the attention deficit disorder kicks in. One sheep, two sheep, cow, turtle, duck, old MacDonald had a farm. Hey, Margarita! Well, I hope you're having fun with these one-liners. That's the thing, my friends. I'm a one-liner comedian. I'm, a, I'm not a storyteller. And interesting how that all started. I used to work for the factory where they make hydrants, but you couldn't park anywhere near the place. I used to be a proofreader for a skywriting company. I'm tired of people calling me lazy. I've had it up to here. <laughs> no, I'm lazy. I'm so lazy, um... <laughs> I didn't write a punch. Uh... A guy walks in the doctor and says, Doctor, I have a ring in my ear. What do I do? He says, don't answer. <laughs> Years ago, I worked in a natural organic health food store in Seattle, Washington, and one day a man walked in and he said, if I melt dry ice, can I swim without getting wet? I said, I don't know. Let me ask Tony. Just because I have arthritis doesn't mean I can't live a normal home. Huh? I told her I knew when I was going to die because my birth certificate has an expiration date on it. <laughs> I decided to leave and go to California, so I packed up my Salvador Dali print of two blindfolded dental hygienists trying to make a circle on an Etch-a-Sketch. Irony! That's one thing I truly do respect about you people here in Britain. <laughs> you get irony, and it's everywhere. Today I slapped a homeless person so hard, <laughs> my charm bracelet fell off. And I headed for the highway and began hitching. Within three minutes I got picked up by one of those huge trailer trucks carrying 20 brand new cars. I climbed up the side of the cab and he opened the door and the guy said, I don't have much room in here, I want to get in one of the cars and back. So I did. He was really into picking up people because he picked up 19 more. We all had our own cars. <laughs> Then he went 90 miles an hour, we all got speeding tickets. Irony. Sharon Osbourne judges talent. <laughs> I know. Irony. There's a paper in Britain called The Sun. <laughs> I, know. I had the photograph on my license taken out of focus on purpose. So when the police do stop me, they go. Here, you can go. You can't write this stuff. <laughs> There's a paper in Britain called The Sun. Yes. My father was a man of few words. I remember he used to say to me, son,
If sometimes you can't hear me, it's because sometimes I'm in parentheses. <laughs> I bought some powdered water, but I don't know what to add. Uh, I want to write a mystery novel. Or do I? <laughs> I actually have written a book. Or have I? I won't do it again. Or will he? It's hard to tell with this renegade. I'm entering the strangest sweepstakes. It's a contest. You pay 50 cents, you get a little card that has a number on it, and then you go up to any stranger. You scratch a penny on his head. <laughs> if the number under there matches the number you have, you win $100. I won twice. I was beat up 11 times. written a book about a transsexual with a speech impediment. It's titled Man or Myth. It's in bookstores. I love to go to bookstores. Sorry, wrong joke. It's a good airline by a combination one way round trip ticket. You leave any Monday. They bring you back the previous Friday. That way you still have the weekend. I love to go to bookstores and say to the clerk, Hello, I'm looking for a book titled How to Deal with Rejection Without Killing. <laughs> Do you have it? I'm going to court next week. I have been selected for jury duty. Kind of an insane case. 6,000 ants dressed up as rice and robbed a Chinese restaurant. Whether your joke's funny or not depends on your frame of mind and what is your intention. I don't think they did it. I know a few of them and they wouldn't do anything like that. therapist says I have a preoccupation with vengeance. We'll see about that. <laughs> Do I watch a lot of television? Oh, yes. I lost a buttonhole. remember I, I remember my dead uncle Harry once saying <laughs> he died two years later <laughs> he was crushed by a piano his funeral was very low-key another fellow walks to the doctor the doctor said you're gonna live to be 60 he said, I am 60 he's one of 10 I'm a member of Over Actors Anonymous, and we have an Over Actors Anonymous meme that starts in... <laughs> an hour. I'm Sir Francis. You've been fantastic. Good night, everyone. I'm standing there naked. The doctor says, go over the window. Stick your tongue out the window. I said, for what? He said, I'm mad at my neighbor. <laughs> Well, I hope you're brightening your day, getting a couple of grins from these one-liners. I hope that you kind of, you know, bring a little smile in your life and just want you to understand. And why did the blonde bring 16 friends to the movies? Well, under 17 is not admitted. And here's a real intellectual joke. Get rational. Be real. Did I already do my deja vu joke? I love this joke. How many pieces do you want? Well, how many pieces do you have? I think that's really funny. I hope I'm bringing a little smile to your day. And just when you think that the ends will meet, somebody moves the frickin' ends. And that there is a difference between an oral and rectal thermometer. Now I'd like to recite the periodic table. <laughs> Hydrogen. <laughs> helium. Lithium. Beryllium. Boron. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen! And I bring a little 
extra smile to your life. I hope that you can understand the shock effect, like our friend gave us of this joke. <laughs> That was the element of surprise. <laughs> well, that's our collection of one-liners for the day. I hope it made a little grin into your life. Pick up your immune system. 75 years. That's how much time you get if you're lucky. 75 years. 75 winters, 75 springtimes, 75 summers, and 75 autumns. When you look at it like that, it's not a lot of time, is it? Don't waste them. Get your head out of the rat race and forget about the superficial things that preoccupy your existence and get back to what's important now. Right now, this very second. And I Bud Light presents Real Men of Genius. Real Men of Genius. Today we salute you, Mr. In the Car Nose Picker. Mr. In the Car Nose Picker. For you, the daily commute isn't simply a drive to the office. It's a hands-on exploration deep into your schnoz. I'm going in now. With pinpoint accuracy and sheer determination, you dig for boogers like miners dig for gold. Hit the jackpot. And why do you do it? Because the windows are up and you think we can't see you. We can. So crack open a nice cold Bud Light, oh nabber of the nose nugget. We'd like to shake your hand, but you'll have to wash it first. Mr. In the Car Nose Picker. Went to the bar, and there was this man sitting at the stool, and he it was real hoarse, he couldn't talk. And he was trying to make some signs, and he was getting drunk. And finally, he fell off the stool, I picked him up. And the bartender said, why don't you take him home? I said, okay. And he, I took him to the to outside to get a taxi, he fell down, he fell down. I picked him up, put him in the taxi. Got out of the taxi, fell down, he fell down. I picked him up, fell down, picked him up, fell down. Got him to the door, you know, found the address and the card in his pocket. And I got him to the door and, you know, his wife said, oh, there's Mortimer. Uh, where's his wheelchair? Suegro, si me permite. Su hija es el amor de mi vida. Es lo que siempre busqué. Y mire que he buscado. <ríe> si su hija y yo pudiéramos tener un, un futuro juntos, <ríe> le aseguro que va a estar bien conmigo. Va a tener todo lo que ella necesite. En la oficina ya me promovieron un puesto más alto. Van a pagarme más y así podremos comprar nuestra casa juntos. De hecho, ya planeamos tener unos cuantos hijos. Bien educados, todo va a estar bien. Y ahora que, que estoy casi seguro, quiero pedirle una sola cosa. ¿Me la puedo llevar a prueba por 30 días? There are three kinds of people in this world. People who can count, and people who can't count. So true. <laughs> the guy walks in the doctor and says, Doctor, I have a ring in my ear. What do I do? He says, Don't answer. <laughs> then we get to the doctors. Oh, yes, this crazy medical system. They get into this crazy idea and they get fixated because there's a lot of small minds. I'm not talking about small mind being stupid. I'm talking about small minds just get reductionistic and they have to do things the same way. They get judgmental. They do not appreciate the diversity. They become bigots, you know, bigotry. It happens. You know, the doctor who will wake you up to give you a sleeping pill, it's that kind of judgment. The doctor who will, you know, Take you off of the, off of the can. You, you know, you're having, you're having a really good shit. And he takes you off of the can to give you a laxative. You know, I'm not really thinking. Really. Make it a Bud Light. All the boys are calling crazy girl. <laughs> I hope she sings this tonight. I know. Hey, Dad, pull over. We need gum. Come yeah. on. Oh, honey. Here's some money. What do we got here? 
I'm her daddy. I'm standing there naked. The doctor says, go over the window. Stick your tongue out the window. I said, for what? He said, I'm mad at my neighbor. <laughs> the doctor who would stop, stop you from having sex so he can give you Viagra. Another fellow walks into the doctor. The doctor said, you're going to live to be 60. He said, I am 60. He's what a tell <laughs> stop you from doing your meditation to give your your blood pressure med medication you see they're not really kind of thinking this all out the doctor said to me get undressed that's to take me out a few times right <laughs> Hey, my chick with the dick. Hurry back here, baby. See, they're not really thinking this all out. They haven't really thought about health and health care. They have disease care. They take care of diseases. They don't really take care of health. And they get this judgmentalness. And they get caught and fixated in different ideas. It's a crazy world. I said, Doc, it hurts when I do that. He said, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a guy with these penguins. So he's taking the penguins. He got a refrigerated car, and the car broke down. Got this big truck refrigerator. He's got these penguins, six penguins, and it's really hot. It's in Arizona. You see, here comes a guy with a convertible Cadillac, and the guy says, "Hey, can you take these six penguins to the zoo?" The guy says, "Yeah, sure." Throws them in the back seat, drives them off. Here's a hundred bucks. Take them to the zoo. Oh, great. Take him to the zoo. Comes back about an hour later. The guy's working on the car. And in the back of the, in the, back of the Cadillac is the six penguins. And they're eating yogurt. And the guy with the truck says, wait a minute. I told you to take him to the zoo. The guy says, I did take him to the zoo. Now we're going to go to the movies. And the guy with the Cadillac, he walked over and said, Looked at the car, looked underneath, and said, looks like you blew a seal. And the one penguin goes, wait a minute, just yogurt, man. Hey, every, everybody, everybody thinks I blew a seal. What the hell? It's just yogurt, man. <laughs> Neurotics build castles in the sky. Psychotics live in the castles in the sky. And the psychiatrists collect the rent. Next scene, picture this. A funeral procession, two hearses. Behind the hearses walks a man with a vicious dog. And a hundred men on the funeral procession. So a fellow steps off the curb and says, what's going on here? He says, my wife and my mother-in-law, my dog bit them. He says, can I borrow the dog? He says, get in line. <laughs> to the psychiatrist and said, you know, I had a dream. I was a teepee and a wigwam. And the psychiatrist said, that's your problem. You're too tense. <laughs> Data. I love the one about the guy that was so proud of his new hunting rifle he just bought, and he couldn't wait for the weekend. Well, finally the weekend arrived, he grabbed his rifle, jumped in his car, and headed out to the woods. When he stopped his car at the perfect place, he jumped out with his rifle, started out hunting, and there before his eyes was this great big sign that said, No hunting. Violators will be prosecuted. Well, he went on around the sign, went out in the woods, finally found him a deer, raised his gun, boom, he got him a deer. Went over and put his rifle on his left shoulder and threw that deer over his right shoulder and headed back out of the woods. Just about the time he got to his car, there was the game warden leaned up against his car waiting on him. Game warden said, 
What you doing? He said, nothing. He says, what's that on your shoulder? He said, my rifle. He said, what's that on your other shoulder? He said, was a clown for Ringling Brothers Circus and when he died all his friends went to the funeral in one car <laughs> I'm living on a one-way dead-end street <laughs> I don't know how I ever got there I've been getting into astronomy, so I installed a skylight. People live above me are furious. I've been making wine at home, but I make it out of raisins, so it'll be aged automatically. Nineteen sixty-six, I'm in Little League, I'm on first. I steal third. I went straight across. <laughs> Earlier in the week, I learned that the shortest distance between two points was a straight line. So I, mean, I argued with the umpire that second base was out of my way. <laughs> Oh, 
I'm no singing. Oh, go and get a glass of water. Sugar and processed foods can make a bacteria that can take over your child's brain, can take over your brain. And these synthetic sweeteners are even worse. These chemicals, they can help make disease and death. You gotta stop boiling things in oil. And basically, they stop making the hormones. So then you're not so happy. You get depressed. When you get depressed, you attend seminars. When you attend seminars, you feel like a winner. When you feel like a winner, you go to Vegas. When you go to Vegas, you lose everything. And when you lose everything, you sell your hair to a wig shop. Don't sell your hair to a wig shop. Whole plant foods can increase your wellness, reduce weight, increase sex drive, increase intelligence, restore health, the heart, and all the organs. It's amazing that what whole plant foods can do. You have to stop eating the crap and eat more real food, natural food, nature, not synthetics. So what are you doing tonight? Uh, nothing. Do you want to go to a party <laughs> with me? Yeah. And we could just go to my place before and hang out. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Uh, hold on. Oh, uh, I thought you were talking You can't about always be smooth, but your beer should be, with a specially lined can to seal in the taste. Keystone Light is always smooth. Even when you're not. I'm really sorry about what just happened. No, oh, that's cool. I feel embarrassed. Yeah, just a second. Oh, man. My name is Nick Vujicic and it's a pleasure to be with you. So I have no limbs, but I have my little chicken drumstick. And uh... So it's like... You like that? That would be really cool if I could get this and get some techno going like... Here we go. One, two, three, four! But honestly, along the way, you might fall down like this. Ready? <whistles> Hello! Right. So what do you do when you fall down? Get back up. Everybody knows to get back up because if I start walking, I'm not going to get anywhere. But I tell you, there are some times in life where you fall down. And you feel like you don't have the strength to get back up. Do you think you have hope? Because I tell you, I'm down here, face down, and I have no arms, no legs. It should be impossible for me to get back up, but it's not. You see, I will try 100 times to get up, and if I fail 100 times, if I fail and I give up, do you think that I'm ever going to get up? No. But if I fail, I try again, and again, and again. But I just want you to know that it's not the end. It matters how you're going to finish. Are you going to finish strong? And you will find that strength to get back up like this.
Правильно все это поняли. At the river mouth, the bears catch only the tastiest, most tender salmon. Which is exactly what we at John West want. John West endure the worst to bring you the best. For things you'll only see once in a lifetime. See, so see, life really is a big joke. That's the ultimate experience. Recognizing humor is the major release. And what we're really here for is to be able to enjoy and find little humor. And some people, maybe you don't have quite the same sense of humor, but if you start to just juxtaposition things, if you reduce your ideas of bigotry and reduce your ideas of your fixation on judgment, if you can open your heart to diversity and flip-flop things a little bit, recognize that there is a multitudinous, incredible, fantastic world. And if you just juxtaposition a couple of things and learn to laugh at yourself, you're going to take things a lot easier. You're going to be able to cure your different diseases. All it takes is just a couple minutes of belly laugh, and you can reduce pain. And it, it will stimulate healing, building up your immune system. Because that's what we really need to do is build up the immune system. Let's listen to George Carman talk, talk about that. One. Because that's what Americans do now. They're always willing to trade away a little of their freedom in exchange for the feeling, the illusion of security. What we have now is a completely neurotic population obsessed with security and safety and crime and drugs and cleanliness and hygiene and germs. There's another thing, germs. Where did this sudden fear of germs come from? in this country. Have you noticed this? The media constantly running stories about all the latest infections, salmonella, E. coli, hantavirus, bird flu, and, and Americans are, they panic easily, so now everybody's running around scrubbing this and spraying that and overcooking their food and repeatedly washing their hands, trying to avoid all contact with germs. It's ridiculous and it goes to ridiculous lengths in prisons. Before they give you a lethal injection, they swab your arm with alcohol. <laughs> It's true. It's true. It's true. Well, well, they don't want you to get an infection. And you can see their point. Wouldn't want some guy to go to hell and be sick. It would take a lot of the sportsmanship out of the whole execution. Fear of germs. Why, these fucking pussies. You can't even get a decent hamburger anymore. They cook the shit out of everything now because everybody's afraid of food poisoning. Hey, where's your sense of adventure? Take a fucking chance, will you? You know how many people die in this country from food poisoning every year? 9,000. That's all. It's a minor risk. 
Take a fucking chance, bunch of goddamn pussies. Besides, what do you think you have an immune system for? It's for killing germs. But it needs practice. It needs germs to practice on. So, so listen. So listen. If you kill all the germs around you and live a completely sterile life, then when germs do come along, you're not going to be prepared. And never mind ordinary germs, what are you going to do when some super virus comes along that turns your vital organs into liquid shit? I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to get sick, you're going to die, and you're going to deserve it because you're fucking weak and you got a fucking weak immune system. Now, hey, God damn it. Hey. All right. Let me tell you a true story about immunization, okay? When I was a little boy in New York City in the 1940s, we swam in the Hudson River, and it was filled with raw sewage, okay? We swam in raw sewage, you know, to cool off. And at that time, the big fear was polio. Thousands of kids died from polio every year. But you know something? In my neighborhood, no one ever got polio. No one, ever. You know why? Because we swam in raw sewage. It strengthened our immune systems. The polio never had a prayer. We were tempered in raw shit. So, so personally, I never take any special precautions against germs. I don't shy away from people who sneeze and cough. I don't wipe off the telephone. I don't cover the toilet seat. And if I drop food on the floor, I pick it up and eat it. I eat it. Yes, I do. Even if I'm at a sidewalk cafe in Calcutta, the poor section, on New Year's morning during a soccer riot. And you know something, in spite of all that so-called risky behavior, I never get infections. I don't get them. I don't get colds, I don't get flu, I don't get headaches, I don't get upset stomachs. And I, you know why? Because I got a good, strong immune system and it gets a lot of practice. My immune system is equipped with the biological equivalent of fully automatic military assault rifles with night vision and laser scopes. And we have recently acquired phosphorus grenades, cluster bombs, and anti-personnel fragmentation mines. So, when my white blood cells are on patrol, reconnoitering my bloodstream, seeking out strangers and other undesirables, if they see any, any suspicious looking germs of any kind, they don't fuck around. They whip out the wexen, weapons, they wax the motherfucker, and deposit the unlucky fellow directly into my colon. <laughs> into my colon. There's no nonsense. There's no Miranda warning. There's none of that three strikes and you're out shit. First defense, bam, into the colon you go. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh. And speaking of my colon, I want you to know I don't automatically wash my hands every time I go to the bathroom, okay? Can you deal with that? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. You know when I wash my hands? When I shit on them. That's the only time. That's the o And you know how often that happens? Tops, tops, two, three times a week, tops, tops. Maybe a little more frequently over the holidays, you know what I mean? And I'll tell you something else, my well-scrubbed friends. You don't always need a shower every day. Did you know that? It's overkill. Unless you work out or work outdoors or for some reason come in intimate contact with huge amounts of filth and garbage every day, you don't always need a shower. All you really need to do is to wash the four key areas. Armpits, asshole, crotch, and teeth. Got that? Armpits, asshole, crotch, and teeth. In fact, you can save yourself a whole lot of time if you simply use the same brush on all four areas. No. You are not going to leave this room until you hear some You Might Be a Redneck. If you think in sync is where your dirty dishes are, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If your working television sits on top of your non-working television, 
You might be a redneck. If you've ever been accused of lying through your tooth, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If you work without a shirt on, and so does your husband, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If an episode of Walker, Texas Ranger changed your life, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If you've ever worn a tube top to a funeral home, <laughs> you might be a redneck. Oh, my God. <laughs> I can't even believe you just said that. <laughs> Why, did you see that? No. I got one better. If you've ever opened a beer during a eulogy, you might be a redneck. <laughs> I'm just guessing one of your relatives. My Uncle Jack. <laughs> we, I swear to you, Jeff, we were sitting. We weren't even outside. We were in the church. And the reverend had just finished the eulogy, and we heard... <laughs> And we look in the back, and he's sitting there with a beer, and he goes, what? <laughs> Mama looks good, don't she? That ain't Mama. No, that's her. They just shaved her beard off. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Forgot my beard. <laughs> All right, well, as long as you're telling one's on your relatives, I'm telling one on you. This is one he he did, and it, it's about 12 years ago in Iowa. I want you to think back. A couple of oh, DJs no, told me about no, this. No. If you have ever ridden an electric floor buffer, <laughs> you... all right. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Tequila was involved. Get off me. I wonder how many times his wife has said that. <laughs> One more on you. If you ever empty the bed of your pickup truck by driving backwards really fast and slamming on the brakes. That's how we move. You might be a redneck. If you've ever used a bar stool for a walker. <laughs> you might be a redneck. If you think Silence of the Lambs is what happens when Larry walks out to the barn. <laughs> That's funny. I don't care who you are. That's funny. Get it done. If there is an electronic singing fish in more than three rooms of your home, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If you missed fifth grade graduation because you had jury duty, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If you think fast food is hitting a deer at 65 miles an hour, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If somebody tells you you have something in your teeth and you take them out to see what it is, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If you have a complete set of salad bowls and they all say Cool Whip on the side, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If you wear a dress that is strapless with a bra that isn't, <laughs> you might be... Think about that and try to sleep tonight, all right? If you've ever stared at a can of orange juice because it said concentrate, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If you've ever had your nipples
nipple bitten off by a beaver. <laughs> you might be ready to God bless you. Thank God. you. <laughs> I didn't say sell me. I said give me. Wish I knew what they were gonna do to us. But no matter what happens to us, what happens to you, I hope will be worse. I don't think you have to worry too much about that. My wife is divorcing me. My mother-in-law is suing me for damages. My daughter is applying to the courts to have her name changed. My pension has been revoked, and the only reason that you ten idiots will very likely get off lightly is because the judge will have me up there to throw the book at. Oh, that's tough. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I'd like to think that sometime, maybe ten or twenty years from now, there'd be something I could laugh at. Anything. Item six on the agenda, the meaning of life. Now, uh, Harry, you've had some thoughts on this. That's right, yeah. I've had a team working on this over the past few weeks, and uh, what we've come up with can be reduced to two fundamental concepts. One, people are not wearing enough hats. Two, matter is energy. In the universe, there are many energy fields which we cannot normally perceive. Some energies have a spiritual source which act upon a person's soul. However, this soul does not exist ab initio as orthodox Christianity teaches. It has to be brought into existence by a process of guided self-observation. However, this is rarely achieved owing to man's unique ability to be distracted from spiritual matters by everyday trivia. What was that about hats again? Sugar and processed foods can make a bacteria that can take over your child's brain, can take over your brain. And these synthetic sweeteners are even worse. These chemicals, they can help make disease and death. You've got to stop boiling things in oil. And basically, they stop making the hormones. So then you're not so happy. You get angry. When you get angry, you go blow off steam. When you go blow off steam, accidents happen. When accidents happen, you get an eye patch. When you get an eye patch, people think you're tough. When people think you're tough, people want to see how tough. And when people want to see how tough, you wake up in a roadside ditch. Don't wake up in a roadside ditch. Whole plant foods can increase your wellness, reduce weight, increase sex drive, increase intelligence, restore health to the heart and all the organs. It's amazing that what whole plant foods can do. You have to stop eating the crap and eat more real food, natural food, nature, not synthetics. This DNA, this energy field that we are. And we're all going to die, that happens. There's nothing, nothing we can do about that. But if we can find a little bit of humor and a little bit of relaxation, just look at the funny side. Maybe we can enjoy life a little bit more and live a little longer. Enjoy that, that flavor of life. So I hope that you got a couple of good laughs out of this. And you have to recognize that even if it isn't so funny, laugh. 
Because you got to fake it till you make it. You got to laugh. Just that laughing stimulates the entire body's immune system and can bring you back. And ultimately, recognizing that all of the things that you want different, the sufferings, etc., the pain, the disease, these are all part of your growth, part of process, part of what you are. It's all blessed experience. Recognize, relax, and enjoy. Desiree DuVernay, sign it off. I do not know. But it was a wonderful feeling. Captain, 